our committee will be holding hearings on them. Now, Senator Javits of New York, a Republican, the ranking Republican member of the Senate Labor and Public Welfare Committee, of which I am chairman, the Republican uh, chairman of uh, the Republican senior member, says that ultimately it means less food for the poor people that he wholly disapproves of this proposal that you take a mother with children, if they're old enough to go to school, that you take her off relief and say, uh, you work or you won't eat, that we won't give you any food relief packages. But the Nixon proposal does not offer jobs to that 500,000 women. There are 500,000 women, they say, we're taking you off relief if your children are big enough to go to school, and we're taking you off of relief unless you go to work. I think that carries with it the obligation to furnish a job to go to work on. And the Nixon administration is not offering the jobs to the people on relief. That would enable them to work their way off relief. Sir, a week ago today, I probably would have gone as an interested bystander, but, uh, well, I guess I opened my mouth and put my foot into something that is bigger than I ever dreamed of, and I feel a moral obligation to the hundreds of people who have asked me to appear at the city council and also speak about their views on the proposed ad valorem tax. Uh, believe me, Mr. Reyes, this started out as a protest on the grocery sales tax, and we quickly found that this is a general revolt on all consumer taxation and property taxation, and also uh, it seems to be heading up into a revolt by many people on the excessive school taxation also. Some ten years ago, an industrialist and a distinguished scientist found themselves sitting beside one another on a night flight from New York to Dallas, and they found themselves discussing how the Southwest needed an advanced studies institution, an institution manned only by the most brilliant scholars and advanced students. That industrialist was Eric Johnson, soon to become mayor of Dallas. The world-famous scientist was Dr. Lloyd Berkner, and from their airborne conversation emerged this rather remarkable institution of higher learning. With public contributions, they built their institution out here near Richardson in what once was a cotton field, and the facility indeed attracted top scientists from throughout the world. Its faculty read like a United Nations roll call. It was a different institution, a research institution, in which the faculty actually outnumbered the student body. It never fielded an athletic team, never had school colors or school song. It did help send a man to the moon by completing a series of NASA research projects. It was first called the Graduate Research Center, then renamed the Southwest Center for Advanced Studies. But despite academic and research accomplishments, perhaps no event in the history of the institution equaled that which occurred here today. For on this September 1st holiday, the Southwest Center officially became the University of Texas at Dallas. There were no dignitaries on hand, no speeches. The official ceremony commemorating the event, in fact, won't be held until September the 11th. A farmer once guided his turning plow across this field, and the cotton he grew here helped make Dallas the financial hub of the Southwest. But now Dallas thrives on other products, like science and aerospace technology. And in this building, white smock scientists work where once pickers drug their heavy canvas cotton sacks between narrow cotton rows. This is Tommy Ayers reporting from the new University of Texas at Dallas for Channel 8 News.
That is a scuba diving float you see there. The flashing and the bubbles you see are scuba divers under the waters of Lake Grapevine. Two of these three scuba divers are winners of trophies at competition at Lake Travis near Austin, where they were involved in a spearfishing competition. Let's go down to the water side here and talk with them just for a moment about this scuba week so proclaimed by Governor Preston Smith. Why was scuba week proclaimed by the governor? Well, in the past, uh, scuba diving hadn't been getting a good recognition. And so uh, we went to Governor Smith, and uh, he proclaimed that this, this week would be Skinny Scuba Diving Week. You just won trophies down at Lake Travis in Austin, we understand. What did you do to win them? We were in a sanctioned spearfishing contest uh, about four hours long. I think we shot 66 pounds and came in fourth place. There are approximately 40 divers in the Lone Star Club of the Fort Worth area. There are 40 clubs in the state of Texas, and estimates run as high as 5,000 scuba divers. Down they go for another look at the parade. From Lake Grapevine, Jerry Taff, Channel 8 News, reporting. You may recall that some months ago there was a great deal of discussion here in Fort Worth about the manner in which juveniles are treated once they become wards of Tarrant County. Well, it's anticipated here now that architectural designs for the proposed county juvenile center will be completed sometime this month. Then the commissioner's court and the members of the county juvenile board will have an opportunity to discuss again what to do. A scaled down version of their original proposal, they say, can be built for about $800,000. The question is, where will they get $800,000? County Auditor Star Williams says present county levels are not adequate to provide that much money. There have been repeated rumors of bond elections, and there is the possibility of a tax hike. The matter appears, one way or the other, to be about to come up again sometime in September. And when it does, we will again be reminded that in the meantime, children are sitting in the county jail, for in Tarrant County, there's nowhere else to put them. Jerry Taff, Channel 8 News, reporting. In the not-too-distant past, residents of the Lake Worth area reported seeing a half-man, half-animal creature, belligerent by nature, who apparently took offense to intruders in the vicinity of Greer Island. One eyewitness described the creature as a monster with long hair on its face, fire in its eyes, and soul in its soul. Well, if you believe that, you may be gullible enough to believe that man will walk on the moon in this century. The Lake Worth story spread far and wide, and in the days and nights of which followed, hundreds of the more curious gathered at the place of sighting, but without success. However, some reported hearing its high-pitched scream, which was described as being nothing human. One Jerry Taft, Channel 8 reporter, after an extensive investigation, concluded that the creature either did not exist or was offended by the unflattering description. Apparently, the booger of Lake Worth has withdrawn to the uncontaminated darkness from which he sprang, perhaps never to return if he was ever here in the first place. Man be caught dead looking like that. For Channel 8 News from Lake Worth, boo.
It's it's a, it's a way of of saying to people you can you can be what you are and the people will love you for it and respect you for it and nobody's going to say I have authority over you and you can uh, you have to respect what I say every authority comes from inside and that's what people are learning the only reason people do what they do here the reason people are gentle with each other is not because some outside authority is saying anything it's right in here it's their inner it's that pure light within them and everybody's got it you got it you recognize it in yourself. On the first day, it's kind of tight, you know, like the vibrations are strange and like people are, are leery, you know, like everybody's kind of strangers. But by the time they leave here, I'll tell you, they'll all be together. <laughs> Does the uh, music have a message for you? Does it tell you something? Very or is it just loud noise? Very much so. It tells me uh, it has an expression of freedom, of not being tied down. And uh, the rhythm is, is just something wonderful. Well, usually you feel pretty good and you can get up and boogie or uh, dance around. Enjoy it with your, with your friends, touch them, feel them, have a good time. Just whatever you want to do, whatever comes naturally. Take your clothes off. <laughs> that comes naturally. Sure, you weren't born with clothes. <laughs> that the end result of living doesn't necessarily have to be accumulation but can be a kind of a gracefulness you know uh, people people and people in our generation you know are all taught you are what you achieve and so everybody tries to do this marvelous dance with a thousand pounds you know on each hand and they say wow look how beautifully I can dance with a thousand pounds on both hands and somebody comes up and says hey man if you want to dance beautifully try it with no weight at all and if there's somebody can get that in their head, man, they, they, they drop these weights and they soar. They really do. And then, then their only commitments are out of love for people. For the next 10 years. Sure. It'd be beautiful because, like, I mean, would you rather a place like this than a hospital? Uh, for anything not really serious, sure. Because this way, like, especially with freakouts, when you have a thing with freakouts, 
uh, it's best if you can keep them around the same kind of people because then they're used to seeing you and they don't you know it's easier for them to relate to that and like there's a we're doing a lot of things with with some people who have been doing this for a long time like I've been doing it for about a year now working with people uh, you just rap to them and we got a guy who's been doing this since for 10 years he's been working with people with dope and stuff that's over there and uh, you get them talking to each other and they end up helping each other a lot you know, what you're saying that has as much to do with the uh, cure as some of uh, the uh, aid uh, material sure sure well it's not so much a really a cure it's the idea that that they got scared probably or they saw something of, about themselves that they didn't like very much and they didn't know how to cope with it so you rap with them about it and they come to realize what's actually wrong with them and what's actually bothering them and a lot of most of them that we've had like was at the beginning of a trip they went in there uh, we wrapped with them enough that they really went, got to their heads in a better place and they're out here having a good time well, that's why it's, it's not serious at all. You like, uh, there's been a few serious ones, but they're all right. They end up just, you know, calming them down, and they go to sleep, and they wake up in the morning, and they're a little dazed and a little tired, but they're all right. There's no real, real problems. It's not really often when a group of people can get together and really like do their thing. Whereas if they want to light a joint, you know, they can do it without the heat coming around and saying, "Wow, we're taking you away. You're busted," you know. And uh, no busting out here. Well. I guess there could be, but I doubt it seriously. And like, the people are here because, uh, oh, these are, they're, you know, they're type of people. How does this apply to uh, outside uh, living when you get out of these pop festivals, go back to LA where you're from? Well, uh, it makes you kind of sad that like, people in every day can't be as nice to each other as they are at these festivals, you know? Like a lot of these people will go back home and like right now, if they were driving along the road and they saw some guy hitchhiking, you know, they'd stop, you know? But when they go back home, they'll go back into that little that little shell that everyday life puts them in, you know? Like you, everybody's a stranger. And everybody shouldn't be a stranger. You know what I mean? 